Economic Survey 2017-18 Demonetization Today if I demonetize? Demonetization has been a radical unprecedented step with short-term costs and long-term benefits. The liquidity squeeze was less severe than suggested by the headlines and has been easing since end December 2016. A number of follow-up actions would minimize the costs and maximize the benefits of demonetization. These include Fast transactions and payments Demand, driven Remonetization Further tax reforms Bringing land and real estate into the GSD Reducing tax rates and stamp duties Acting to allay anxieties about overzealous tax administration These actions would allow growth to return to trend in 2017-18, following a temporary decline in 2016-17. The aim of the action was fourfold. Counterfeiting the use of high denomination notes for terrorist activities and especially the accumulation of black money, generated by income that has not been declared to the tax authorities. This was done after a series of previous efforts like the creation of the Special Investigative Team, SIT, in the 2014 Budget The Black Money and Imposition of Tax Act 2015 Ben Army Transactions Act 2016, the Information Exchange Agreement with Switzerland changes in the tax treaties with Mauritius, Cyprus and Singapore The Income Disclosure Scheme India's demonetization is unprecedented in international economic history, in that it combines secrecy and suddenness amidst normal economic and political conditions. All other sudden demonetizations have occurred in the context of hyperinflation, wars, political upheavals, or other extreme circumstances. But the Indian economy had been growing at the fastest clip in the world on the back of stable macroeconomics and an impressive set of reforms. India's action is not unprecedented in its own economic history. There were two previous instances of demonetization, in 1946 and 1978, the latter not having any significant effect on cash. In the wake of the global financial crisis, GFC, advanced economies have used monetary policy to stimulate growth, stretching its use to domains heretofore considered heretical such as negative interest rate policies and helicopter drops of money. In fact, India has given a whole new expression to unconventional monetary policy, with the difference that whereas advanced economies have focused on expanding the money supply, India's demonetization has reduced it. This policy could be considered a reverse helicopter drop, or perhaps more accurately a helicopter hoover. Background Facts Cash can be understood along two dimensions. Its function and its nature, origins, cash can be illicit or not. In terms of function, cash can be used as a medium of exchange, for transactions, or as a store of value like other forms of wealth such as gold and real estate. Function and nature are quite distinct. For example, cash used as a store of value could be white, the savings that all households keep for an emergency, while cash used for transactions could be black, if it was earned through tax evasion and or corruption. Cash held as black money can be converted to white through laundering and other means or by declaring it to the authorities and paying the associated tax, penalty. A few facts are relevant to, and have motivated, demonetization. 1. India's currency to GDP ratio has evolved in two broad phases. It declined fairly steadily for the first decade and a half after independence falling from around 12% in 1952-53 to about 9% in 1967-68. Thereafter, the ratio appears to have responded to the growth of the economy. It began its upward trend in the late 1970s when growth increased, 
and then accelerated further during the growth boom of the 2000s. This ratio declined during the period of high inflation in the late 2000s and early 2010s but it rebounded after 2014 15-12% when inflation declined again. The value of high denomination notes, 500 Indian rupees and 1000 Indian rupees, relative to GDP has also increased in line with rising living standards. 2. India's economy is relatively cash-dependent, even taking account of the fact that it is a relatively poor country. Data shows that some of the cash holdings were not being used for legitimate transactions, but perhaps for other activities such as corruption. This presumption is especially strong because across the globe there is a link between cash and nefarious activities, the higher the amount of cash in circulation, the greater the amount of corruption, as measured by Transparency International. In this sense, attempts to reduce the cash in an economy could have important long-term benefits in terms of reducing levels of corruption yet India is off the line meaning that its cash in circulation is relatively high for its level of corruption. The higher a note is relative to income, the less likely it is to be used purely for transactions purposes. In India's case, the denomination slash income ratio has fallen sharply over the past quarter century because incomes have been growing rapidly relative to the prevailing highest denomination notes. This suggests that the high denomination notes have become increasingly useful for transactions over time. Perhaps the most conclusive evidence on the extent to which Rs 500 and Rs 1000 notes are used for transactions comes from data on soil rates, that is the rate at which notes are considered to be too damaged to use and have been returned to the central bank. RBI data show that in India low denomination notes have a soil rate of 33% per year. In contrast, the soil rate for the Rs 500 note is 22% and the Rs 1000 just 11%. One way to estimate black money is to assume that all these notes should soil at the same rate, if they were really being used for transactions. This would yield an estimate of money that is not used for transactions at Rs. 7.3 lakh crores. But this assumption would be extreme since the lower soil rates for the high denomination notes could arise if they are used in the same way, but just less frequently because there are fewer high-value transactions. There is a way, albeit not perfect, to differentiate between these two hypotheses by comparing Indian data to soil rates in other countries. In principle, if a rupee denomination note and a foreign denomination note fulfill a similar transaction function, then their soil rates should be similar, all else equal. If the Indian soil rate is instead lower, this suggests that a fraction of the notes are not being used for transactions, but rather for storing black money. Analytics. Analytically, demonetization should be seen as comprising the following a money supply contraction but only of one type of money cash attacks on unaccounted private wealth maintained in the form of cash, black money, and attacks on savings outside the formal financial system. Benefits. The Wattle Committee has recently estimated that cash accounts for about 78% of all consumer payments being digitized. Digitalization can broadly impact three sections of society the poor, who are largely outside the digital economy the less affluent, who are becoming part of the digital economy having acquired Jan Dan accounts and rupee cards, and the affluent, who are fully digitally integrated via credit cards. In the wake of the demonetization, the government has taken a number of steps to facilitate and incentivize the move to a digital economy. These include Launch of the BIM, Parat Interface for Money, App for Smartphones Launch of Adam Merchant Pay, 
aimed at the 350 million who do not have phones. Reductions in fees, merchant discount rate, paid on digital transactions and transactions that use the UPI. The success of digitalization will depend considerably on the interoperability of the payments system. The Unified Payments Interface UPI, created by the NPCI is the technology platform that will be the basis for ensuring interoperability but to ensure this, individual banks should facilitate not thwart interoperability. Demonetization could have particularly profound impact on the real estate sector. In the past, much of the black money accumulated was ultimately used to evade taxes on property sales. An equilibrium reduction in real estate prices is desirable as it will lead to affordable housing for the middle class, and facilitate labor mobility across India currently impeded by high and unaffordable rents. Demonetization is potentially an aggregate demand shock, because it reduces the supply of money and affects private wealth and aggregates supply shock to the extent that cash is a necessary input for economic activity and an uncertainty shock because economic agents face imponderables related to the impact and duration of the liquidity shock as well as further policy responses.